Well, I'm going to make part three of the stray voltage saga. And just to recap, this is testing that was done back in 2018. That red line is the line where it starts to affect cows. And this is the readings. This is the whole time he was here. And all these spikes are basically as we were turning things on. So like I say, a spike doesn't make a whole, hell, a whole lot of difference because it's only like a millisecond. It's the steady part that causes problems with the cows because you're going to have this regardless. Because like I say, a 7 horsepower motor starting up draws a lot of power. So that's where you get them spikes. But this is what we want to try to eliminate or watch. And before I get into that, I'm going to talk about, I had a, had that conference call with the guy from Penn State this morning, and we talked for about an hour. Basically, we only talked about, um, about the straight voltage and different things, and so I got the panel opened up, what I'm getting ready to do here, but kind of got a game plan. He gave me some things to check, to look at. And then um, I got silage samples sent off yesterday, so hopefully we get them back. And I actually sent off corn silage, the haylage, and I pulled a sample off the feed alley of the feed mix. That's going to give us the fastest indication on how far the feed is off by testing what I'm at, the mix that I'm actually feeding the cows. And we kind of come to the conclusion I did a while. Did a water test back in 2018. I know this water's been tested three different times. 18, and then I know I did it through Cargill, and I know I did it through Dairy One. I forget how long them were. I mean, but it's been four or five years. So they suggested pulling another water sample because I can only find the one from 18 that we did, and nothing was out of the ordinary there. But it'd be good to pull another water sample and see if anything's changed since then. Now, like I say, the milk company, they pull water samples pretty regularly. I ain't exactly sure all what they check, whether they're just checking for bacteria and what, but we're so gonna get that done. But the one thing he com comes up with, I mean, you could still have stray voltage. He wants me to check all these connections. You could have a loose wire, a corroded connection, which I don't expect to see anything here. But, like I say, make sure all these screws are tight. And I think main the concentration's on the neutral and the ground wires. But like I say, I'll go through all the breakers. And then, uh, anything for corrosion. And that's what I asked, one question I asked them specifically, if it's a matter if it's a different building would it cause a stray voltage in another building? Because if anything, that panel in that barn would have corrosion. So I say I gotta check that panel too. Because there's a 100 amp panel in that barn. And that's what they call a sub panel. Because that's connected to the 200 amp panel in this barn. So that's how this works here. The comes into the meter, and then this is a generator switch, and it comes into here. And I can open this up. You got your line that comes in from the meter. These are your main lines. And then we got this block here, and what happens is we got these jumpers going into each of these blocks and then one of these wires is going through here up into this 200 amp panel and the other one goes down through here down to the 200 amp panel in that barn and this is so when I throw the switch to generator the generator is feeding all these buildings at the same time because I gotta have power to this panel because this is where the water pump is wired to so if I only hook the generator up to that barn, I won't have any water. If I hook it up here for water, then there's no way I can run that barn to wash milkers. So like I said, I gotta go through here and make sure all these screws are tight. And that's what I can do here now, because with this off here, 
Everything from here down is dead. These are all dead. This is all dead. The only thing I got to worry about is them two lines here. Them two are hot yet. So I can't do, I'm not going to do nothing with them. And then he did suggest getting an electrician in here because, like I say, maybe these just, maybe these are loose. Maybe they need new grease put on them, you know, dried out. This is a connection need to have rechecked. Um, so that's what I'm doing here now. It'll be the next step checking all this and then I got to check and it's possibility that that transfer switch up or the isolator switch went bad I can't even see what's on my phone such a glare let's yeah, see if I get a spot here where I can see something yeah the silver box up there is the isolator switch and I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, this was a solution after I got that report back. Took it down to the REA. They basically wouldn't even look at it. They said they would go, if there was an issue, they'd have our, their expert check, which they sent hit their expert around. He thumbed through it. He didn't even really look at it. He did his testing, and I don't know what readings he was getting, but I do know on the back of the old barn, I did see he get a, got a .6 reading touching the ground. Well, after he was done with his checking, there was two engineers from the REA here, and he they were talking, and I heard him say that he doesn't think there's enough to cause an issue, but it wouldn't hurt to put an isolator switch on to see what happens and to be safe. So that's what they decided to do. They put an isolator switch on. Now to do this, the switch has to go on the pole with the transformer. Problem at the time was the transformer was on that pole over there and it fed the house and the barn. You had this uh, that triplex wire, wire that's twisted together running from there to here. Problem is if they put that isolator switch on over there, they're isolating the house too, which they didn't want to do. So what they ended up doing, and I just figured out why they did it today too, they pulled this pole out. This was the pole that was in there. They pulled this pole out, put a new pole in, took the chat transformer was on that pole over there. They took it from there, put it to here, put the isolator switch on, and put a new transformer over there. And then took the triplex down between these poles and put the two main wires in. And that's because they didn't think there was a problem. So you got a new pole, tra isolator switch, transformer, two line crews doing this. And they didn't think there was an issue. Now, like I said, this morning I figured out why, after talking to this guy from Penn State, why they pulled this pole. Finally dawned on me. And after him explaining again, refreshing my memory how this isolator switch works. Right now, I... I'm not connected to the neutral. That isolator switch is isolating me from neutral. And I think it's 12 volts. So when it detects 12 volts, that closes and connects back to the neutral. So like I say, so nothing's coming that way. And what they did was, why they replaced this pole is for this ground wire. This is their ground that comes off and down at the bottom of the pole, it's spiraled around the bottom. So that's touching ground. This is grounding their side. On this side of the pole, they have an insulated ground. And that is connected to a ground. And if I remember right, it should be right there at the base of that guide wire, where that yellow covering is. And that's my ground on this side. Get out of damn thorns. So that's how I'm isolated. And like I say, if there's a surge of power or whatever, then that switches and puts it back to neutral. Now, so the way he talked, the possibility is either that switch could be bad, could be as simple as a broken wire at that ground, maybe something chewed through it, 
loose or corroded correct connections somewhere in any of these panels and maybe I gotta check the vacuum pump motor several of these motors too and to check this to see if that switch is bad he says I should be able to touch take a ground rod and touch ground my meter out somewhere touch their wire and then touch my wire and the reading should be different if they were the same then that switch could be bad. So that's my plan here right now. I'm not gonna be filming any of that because I'm gonna have to have both hands to do it. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is check across them, see if anything's different. And then I'm gonna cut the power and then come in here and check all these connections and then go through this panel, the other panel. I'm gonna go through all the panels and everything right now. I'm not gonna check any of the motors. For at this at this point and then uh, I would after that I'll come back and if there, like, see if there's different readings or something there and see what I get and maybe I have to talk to him again or I'll end up getting like say an electrician in here again because the way he talked there should be some sort of grease on this because one problem is we got copper the copper from the generator wires, the ground neutral is in with aluminum. And that could be an issue. So I said, whether I got tighten, get that tightened, that seems to be tight anyhow. But like I say, it could be just as simple as that. Maybe just need to get electrical grease into, into that. Um, what else could there be? But like I say, this is the simplest right now to check, and I'm going to go from there. Seems to me there's something else I wanted to say about this, too. But yeah, like I said, oh, that's why he says check the connections. I guess over time, especially aluminum wire, with temperature change and stuff, these connections can loosen up. And... I say make sure these wires are grounded. Damn, I know there's something else we talked about I wanted to mention. I can't remember. But yeah, but the isolator switch was the REA's solution. And whether something's not connected right or something broke or something. Something more somewhere else that we never caught before. It's like I say, I still don't get no readings, but we're going to find out. So thanks for watching and we'll catch up to you later.